we just had somebody out the other day was talking about the some of the sh- the machines that we have and how mm-hmm. they're the good ones that, that like it, it was very particular years and it was very particular mm-hmm. like construction and and now I'm starting to build up that repertoire of like oh this is what a good one feels like yeah this is what like you're, the leg curl that the the, the mm-hmm. one that Meadows was using all the time mm-hmm. it's now I'm on that one and I'm on a different one and then I'm like ooh I I want to go back to that one yeah <laughs> it's really it's good how it feels you know you, you you use enough things you start. And there's some bias there too, mm. you know, so you, you start to form your own bias. This feels a little better than what this is. And you get on enough of them and you're just like, okay, these suck. You know, you can like right away, you know, this just is not built right. Right. Or it's built for somebody that's five, six mm-hmm. and anything outside of that just isn't worth a shit. Yeah. And, but on the other side, there's, um, there's the commercial use aspect too where this is that's such a crazy fucking world yes and the high school aspect and it's like this is great i love this and then you get people that are in a commercial gym like yeah that's good but that's going to end up being thrown on the floor it's never going to be put back the right Right. way that's going to get beat to fuck this is going to get beat to hell and so you got to look at those aspects and then you look at the like the obviously who we had out before was uh he's, it has a commercial space but it's not i wouldn't call that a like a box gym or anything like no, that right no, no. then you look at the equipment in those places and it's it's designed to like load as much weight on and mm-hmm. still be able to do the movement so the people feel good it has nothing to do with actually yeah. like yeah. training the person well yeah that's the other thing it's a, it's so fucking yeah. weird it's but, weird to see that perspective i mean i that's where i i, would, I was coming from that space before i worked here and like even in the the machines that we had, like I'm I'm stacking every single one, and mm-hmm. I'm like I'm not the strongest dude in the world, but like this is not they're made that way three hundred pounds yeah it's not a real three hundred pounds yeah because <laughs> members like to, you know like members like to throw all that weight on there so yeah. it's in this weird evolution with plate loaded equipment over a period of time that you know if you go back to some of the you know original hammer stuff. Mm probably the first plate loaded line i mean on the chest press to put three plates per side you were you were fucking hulk man you were a beast now it's like like five six it's It's crazy because people you know it's the ego thing Mm. you know so you just change the lever arm you make it a little bit easier and now it's i don't know where it's kind of going now but that that played i mean that played a role with our chest supported row that we just came out with because we wanted to change you know, the, not really the angle, but the handles and a lot of things with that. And our original design had the plates out in front, Mm -hmm. which makes it way harder because it's at the very end of the lever. But I like it. So now you don't have to haul, you know, three plates from the other side of the gym or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. you know, to be able to put on there, you just throw a quarter on, throw another quarter on, but nobody's going to buy something that makes that, them feel weak. Yes, that they're going to only be able to do a plate and a quarter on. Right. So you got to figure out where you can put it, you know, that's comparable mm. to the weight that they're going to use on competitors' equipment, for one thing. You know, is it, is it in the middle? How far away from the, the, the standard is it? Yeah. You know, because you start moving too far in either direction off what people's standard is. It's just simply not going to get used no matter how, with most people, no matter how good it feels, which right. is fucked up, you know? So that's just part of it. Yeah. It, it's, and it, even spending any time in that commercial gym or that commercial space, you, you realize how inefficient everything is. It, it almost, everything turns into isolation. Mm-hmm. And everything is like, all right, this is how you train if you're like the laziest human being on the planet. That's great if you're a personal trainer. Though, oh, right? it's great. Oh, well, there Especially are, if it's not plate loaded. Yeah. If it's selectorized. Selectorized, you're like, here we go. Oh, here yeah. we go. Well, they can do it. Like, look at this. You you went up 45 yeah, pounds yeah. on this. Put on two more plates. You oh, know, I say shit. Holy shit. Yeah, no, it's, it's a, it is a different world, but it's, it is kind of cool to be reminded of like the, the way things were made the way things are made now and seeing the connection between how that evolution kind of occurs right yeah and there well there's different mindsets going in what's being built as well mm-hmm. so if somebody's building 100 percent for um 
let's just say, I don't want to say high end commercial because you got different price ranges. Yeah, right, right. So you can have what a Planet Fitness, which is super cheap. And then I don't know what some of the more expensive ones are, but, mm -hmm. you know, they can go up to $7,500 a month. So the, the equipment that's going to go in there, you have, you know, engineers and designers that are designing for that niche. Mm -hmm. So that's a completely different right. mindset. You know, so they might have some plate loaded stuff, but probably not, mm -hmm. you know, lots of bells and whistles, all that. That's what needs to go in there. And then you have, you know, people are designing equipment with like a, a bodybuilder in mind, you know, what's going to be able to allow them to really feel, mm. the, you know, the muscle and how that's going to kind of play into that. And how can you play with the, the cam or the axis and the levers or whatever it is to be able to accommodate that. Or if you go into the direction of the, the machines that <laughs> think they accommodate resistance, you know, I don't yeah. want to give manufacturer names, but right, right, you right. can load plates in four different areas and, mm -hmm. and there's, I get it. it. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I get it. So you have that, but that all kind of falls into there. Then you got people that are making equipment with the athlete in mind or mm -hmm. the strength athlete in mind. And it was like, how's this going to potentially create transfer yeah. you know, into sport, which I don't think a machine will transfer into sport, but for conversational sake, you know, how, what's the transference there, mm -hmm. you know, or the potential transference. So this, it's interesting with that because you can take a row, mm -hmm. just a, a vertical row, Right? Is that right? A vertical row? No. Horizontal. Horizontal row. Yeah. <laughs> vertical pull. Yeah. So you just take a horizontal row and then apply it to each one of those different types That's of manufacturers. So it's all the same movement plane, mm -hmm. but it's all slightly different mm. because of that. And then you end up getting variations of all those. So what that leads to is the conversations like you saw yesterday yeah. that we were having is, man, you remember that, you know, it's like, well, you know, if that and, could be on this with this yes, and that, because yeah. that, that's like built for that high end commercial stuff. Mm. Like, well, how can we strip this down? Because no training center or normal gym is going to want to pay $9,000 for sure. a horizontal row. Right. How can we strip this down to get pretty close to that same feel, mm. but do it in a selectorized if it's, if, you know, for um, personal training, commercial, you know, something mm -hmm. that, that's more applicable to or plate loaded, you know, and so that's where all these different things come in. And that's why no one line is ever the best. Right. You know, so there, there's other reasons for that too. But some of the coolest gyms that are out there are going to have this mix match, you know, between what the owner thinks is the greatest stuff in mm -hmm. the world. But you'll always have those people will go in there and be like, this, this sucks. Yeah. You know, because everybody's a little bit different on what they like and don't like. And I think if, if you are one of those gym owners out there that's like a collector of older mm -hmm. machines and you like very nuanced things, it's like, don't forget to tell your members why you think this is cool and like yeah. what it does. 